Hey guys, thanks for subscribing to my OnlyPans. Today we're gonna to be making a cast iron chicken pot pie. It's surprisingly easy to make a chicken pot pie from scratch at home. It's a great use for leftover rotisserie chicken or roast turkey. Making pie crust isn't that difficult, even if you've never done it before, you don't really need any tools. Um, it's just a really simple recipe that I wanted to show you how to do. So if you ask me, a uh, pot pie is just that. It's a pie, it's not a stew with a piece of pastry dough on top. It's encapsulated in pie crust, and that's what we're gonna be making here today. Um, I already have a chicken roasting in the oven. But to make a whole pie, we're gonna need to make a double pastry dough crust, which is the first thing I'm gonna start with because it's gotta rest for about an hour. Once we get that in the fridge, we can take the chicken out of the oven, make the sauce that's gonna go inside of the pie, and then everything should come together. It shouldn't take too long. So to make our pie crust, we're gonna need a stick of butter, some ice cold water, and about 300 grams of flour. So we got our flour, our ice water, and our butter. I don't have a pastry cutter, and I think it's kind of a useless tool. It only does one thing. So I use this trick. You can grate your butter into tiny pieces and then throw it in the freezer to get it to firm back up, and then fold it into your dough. All right, we've got that all grated. It's starting to melt a little bit just from me handling it. I'm gonna throw it into a quart and just put it in the freezer for about five or 10 minutes. While your butter's getting cold, you can take your flour, add two teaspoons of salt, just whisk that lightly together. So the whole key to making a flaky pie crust is to keep everything cold. That's why we're using ice water and why we're sticking our butter into the freezer. So if it stays cold, the moisture will stay inside of the butter and it won't melt until it's in the oven. And once it's in the oven and it melts, it'll release steam, which will give you a flaky pie crust. Um, it's the same way you make flaky biscuits. You wanna handle the butter and the dough as little as possible to keep everything as cold as possible. So we can probably pull our butter out, add that to your flour, and you can use two forks to kind of just cut it into your flour until you have pea-sized pieces of butter. Once your butter is all cut in, you start adding your ice water about a tablespoon at a time and mixing it in with a spatula. And you wanna do this until it just comes together as a dough. You wanna work it as little as possible or it'll turn into a dense pie crust. Keep adding water until it starts to come together. Eventually, once it starts coming together a little more past like the shaggy dough phase, you start using your hands to form it into a ball. This is about where we want it. Just barely holding together. It's come together, we haven't worked it too much. I can still see some butter in there. Grab some plastic wrap, wrap it pretty tightly, flatten it out into a disc. Now let that rest in the fridge for about an hour. While that rests, we can start to pull our chicken meat, prep our other vegetables, and get our sauce ready. So while our pie dough rests in the fridge, I'm gonna prep the rest of the ingredients, um, which is gonna be some celery, carrots, parsnips, onion, thyme, and of course more butter. Um, there's no real set proportions. You're pretty much just making a thick stew that you're then gonna put into your pie crust. Give your onion a medium-sized dice. Have and chop your celery. Have or quarter your carrots, depending on the size. I also added some purple carrots for color. Peel and cut your parsnips the same way. The parsnips really take this dish up to 11, so definitely try and use some. A quick trick for picking time, which might be the worst kitchen activity that exists, is to counterintuitively hold it at the bottom of the sprig and pull towards the tip with your other hand. Most of it will slide right off and you'll be left with just the more tender tip, which you can pick or just leave in whole. I'm using a mix of light and dark meat chicken that's already been cooked, but feel free to use turkey, tofu, mushrooms, literally almost anything. Melt a quarter stick of butter and then add a pint of onion. Don't do what I did and second guess yourself and think it's too much. It's not too much. Use a full pint of everything or your filling will be short. Once softened, add your parsnips, carrots, celery, and maybe some more butter. Cook just a bit, keeping in mind that the filling is gonna cook again while baking in the oven. After about a minute or so, add your garlic and thyme and give it a good stir. 
Give everything a good couple of tablespoons of salt, a good stir, and now we're ready to start making a roux, which is what's going to hold everything together once the pie is baked. A roux is basically a mixture of fat, in this case butter, and flour, which is used to thicken sauces. Over medium heat, add a quarter cup flour and stir, making sure it doesn't burn, but cooking out the raw flavor while it lightly browns. I added a little more for closer to a third of a cup, as you want a pretty thick gravy to hold its shape once you cut into the pie. Again, stir and cook until no longer raw, one to two minutes. I deglazed with some white balsamic vinegar. You can also use white wine, sherry, anything with good flavor and acid short of straight lemon juice, which wouldn't pair well. Stir using liquid to release any stuck bits of flour on the bottom, and then add about a quarter cup of your chicken stock. Start with a small amount to evenly dissolve the flour. If you add it all at once, the flour will clump up and not thicken as well. Stir until the sauce is evenly thickened, then add another cup of stock, and stir for about a minute, then add another cup. This part is kind of up to feel on how it looks. You want a good amount of gravy, but also want it to be thick enough to hold its shape. After a couple of times, you can get a feel for it. I'm also going to deglaze the fawn for my roast chicken pan and add that to the sauce. Once the sauce is thickened to your liking, add your pulled chicken and give it a stir. Give it a lot of salt, as you're going to add frozen peas and heavy cream still. And a good amount of fresh cracked black pepper. Give it a taste. It should be slightly over seasoned. Then add about a cup of frozen peas and a third a cup of heavy cream. Give it a stir, kill the heat, cover it, and set it aside. All right, our filling's done. Our pie crust is rested. The only thing left to do is to roll out our crust, put it into the pan, um, fill it, and let it bake. Unwrap your crust. You want to generously flour your table so it doesn't stick. And top your dough with more flour. I don't have a rolling pin, even though I cook a lot, but I do have an abundant amount of muddlers for some reason, and they work just as well. You want to start just smashing this down a little bit until it's about doubled in size. You still want to take care to not handle it any more than you need to, so all that butter stays cold until it's baking. That's probably about ready to start rolling out. And you want to get this to about an eighth of an inch thick. Keep in mind you need enough to the bottom of the pan and to go on top. Sometimes when you're rolling it out, it can stick to the table. So I like to slide some extra flour under there just in case. Almost. It's a big ass cast iron, so it's gonna take a little bit. Just feeling around for any thick parts that might be in the middle that I can stretch out to the edges to get more crust. I'm gonna try to find something that's roughly the same size as this cast iron. So I don't want to put the cast iron down on this because it's so heavy. And then I'm going to cut about an inch wider than I need around this. All right, I got to roll that out just a little bit more. Just a little bit more again. All right, that should be good. So I want to make sure it's big enough it can hang over the lip a little bit so you can attach the top piece to it. And then you can fold it over itself a little bit. I'm going to refrigerate this for about half an hour, which will relax the gluten so it won't shrink when I bake it. I'm going to take the rest of this, kind of join it back together, and roll it out into a top piece. There we go. Nobody has to know we did that. Same thing, take a template, cut a little bit wider than you need it. I'm gonna wrap this in plastic wrap and also stick it in the fridge for about half an hour. All right, and while they both rest, I'm gonna get my egg wash ready, preheat the oven, then we should be ready to go. All right, we're ready to throw this into the oven. So spoon your still warm filling into your chilled 
pie crust bottom. Spread it out so it's even. Take your top piece. Overlap it with the bottom piece. Then take a fork. And this will join the top and the bottom together. It's a couple places it doesn't quite line up. You just do it down inside of the pan. Cut off the extra. Then you want to cut a couple slits around just so you can vent the steam. You want a pretty sharp knife for so it's easy to cut into without disturbing it too much. And then just brush the top piece with some egg wash, which is just one beaten egg. Throw it in a 400 degree oven, wait about half an hour, and then check on it. If your crust is getting a little too dark, you can make a tin foil ring to protect it while it cooks the rest of the way through. Let this rest for at least like 15 minutes before cutting into it so it can solidify again. This is a real moment of truth. Oh my God. It's so good. Thank you.